doing it. Hey, friends. Hello. We are live once again. Um, I'm just going to double check. Oh, I'm so excited. We literally, a few hours ago, just did our little wallflower wager chat. And it feels weird to be done. Like there are there are no more Tessa books. Oh, we have read them. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, you're good. It's just like <laughs> I feel like after being being in the world for so long, it's. Uh, I was I'm like, just oh, amazed wait. that you guys did this. I'm just really like, it's such an an honor. I mean, like, <laughs> I I I feel like I have a. Sorry, I'm messing with my, it's a new light. It's a new setting for me. I was decided to be someplace where my dog might not bark. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I think it's, it's just amazing to me that you guys read them all in a row. And now, you know, all my worst habits, probably <laughs> all the things that I use too many times and, um, all of our favorite things too. Yeah. Well, that would be the ideal if there were favorites, but <laughs> At one point, we had talked about doing like uh, try and guess which one doesn't fit, and we were gonna be like, let's try and find all the Georges. And then I was like, yeah. I can't remember, I can't remember where they are, and so I was like, hey, I can't. we can't Too remember much. anyways. It's, so, like every single person in in every single man in Regency England, like fifty percent of them were named John or George. I mean, and that's not even Honestly. like a an exaggeration i think it's it's fairly close so it i know when in doubt i just call somebody john or george or henry or thomas i don't know why i mean the name the fact that the name george was so ubiquitous ubiquitous that a lot of women were named georgiana is right like, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. there's something in the water here well i mean there's a king so yeah <laughs> <laughs> like a couple of them in close succession named George. So I think it probably came from there. I Fair. love it. But yeah, it's been quite a journey and I'm kind of like, oh, it's been so great. We're so happy you were able to join us again, you know, for Tessa Dare. You're so sweet. <laughs> and, um, we're going to be starting a spooky bingo for spooky season I next week. I saw that. I saw that try to ugh, I can't I'm sorry I'm being such a pain in the butt um I saw that and like I was um saying on Twitter that um what do you call it how to catch a wild viscount yes. <laughs> it, it catches a couple of those boxes <laughs> so if you've already read it you know you can just always a reread mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yes absolutely what's everybody got in their drinks tonight I am drinking water <laughs> So am I. Sadly, it's only four o'clock here, so it's a little early. I just ate lunch, so yeah, I'm going to my friend's house for a fire because it's actually kind of like cozy Ooh. in Wisconsin. I'm wearing a sweater, Ooh, nice. but I, I have my air on still. But it'll be colder tonight. <laughs> Sweater weather. Mm -hmm. it, it, this week it's been like, oh, it's so nice and. Um, you know, moderate. It's only like 85 degrees. <laughs> like, it's not sweltering. I think we go back up to the 90s again tomorrow. I mean, Ooh. this coming week. So. Oh, God. We had that on Wednesday. It's kind of like, ooh, a time yeah. now here. So I feel that. But yeah, I'm going to go have a little fire. What are you drinking, Jay? Uh, well, it is a white claw, but in a jar. So like, Fancy <laughs> and frozen so watermelon slices to Ooh, keep it cold, but see, good. it'll keep it cold without watering it down. I might have to that's text smart. my, my that's really uh, smart. Text somebody in my family to bring me alcohol. We'll see. see how it little, goes. a little concierge service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Bring me red wine. <laughs> I is that a painting it. behind you, by the way? That's really lovely. That is, oh, who? I'm sorry, not me. You, Tessa. Oh, okay. It's like a big Ikea thing from about oh, like right 10 on. years. But it's got, you know, I like, it's it's uh, it's colorful. It's little flowers. I think it's originally a, a photograph. Very cool. 
Well, do we want to start with a game or questions about the book we just finished? That's up to you. <laughs> uh, let's do an icebreaker. Let's do a yeah. game. Okay. I will pull up the screen. So, of course, Tessa will be our main player, but everyone can play along in the comments, too. For so. sure. For sure. <laughs> we won't trick you or anything. These are buttons. Because I'm on my phone, I don't see your comments. So, oh, wait Okay. A well, are you still there? Oh, there's like a, a ooh. <laughs> Okay, I'm just really Fancy. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to do best dick scripture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Got to start off strong here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure, for off. sure. So, <laughs> hey. Oh, God. Am I oh, reading all of these? Go big or go home. <laughs> okay. So, basically. You are reading them. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. Tessa, we just want you to pick your favorite. Don't think about it too hard. So oh, A or B. Win, no doubt, yes, sure. A or B. He was hard and strong in general, but the delicate softness she can never have dreamed. Velvet soft and lightly ridged like a kitten's ear. <laughs> or B, locking her ankles behind his back. She reached under them to touch where their bodies joined, his hard, thick shaft sliding in and out of her body, the soft, vulnerable sack beneath. I swear if my parents walk in. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> Better your parents than my kids. <laughs> um, no, I, like, I don't want to read them. <laughs> I know what book the first one is from, but I don't know uh, the second one. I don't know either, but I know the first two because I will remember the kitten's ear forever. <laughs> okay. I mean, that was one of my, I think it was my first description. So there you go. I guess think it was. It was. It was Goddess Hunt versus A Lady mm -hmm. of Persuasion. And I was quite proud of it too because I was like, I bet I'm the first one to ever compare it to a kitten's ear. <laughs> I was trying I very hard not to do cliches when I was writing that book, so okay. I love it. And yeah, everyone else can play along if Does you want anybody to know your favorite. Did, did you write down which the second one was? It's a lady of a lady of persuasion. Okay. I have a list, don't worry. Oh wow, I'm really impressed. <laughs> okay. Wait, can somebody mm. else help me read? Because <laughs> I don't want to be the only one reading. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> marveling. There's right. marveling. There, there is marveling. She explored him the same way he touched her, skating her fingertips up and down his length, marveling at the silky softness of his skin and tracing the intriguing yet entirely unfamiliar contours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can cross out any of my non-version heroines. So, okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, her first impression was the softness. She hadn't been expecting such a silky, smooth quality to meet her touch. She continued her oh story from fascinated by the ruddy oh hue God. of the tip, the veins that wound around his chest, this and shivered awesome. under her skin. <laughs> oh, Love it. oh my. I don't remember. <laughs> well, I don't A, I think a oh is your God. preference? Okay. So I like the was, description in the second one. Really, uh, you what was what? Absolutely, please uh, do. Wow, do I mean the veins. I'm always a fan of veins. Mm -hmm. Why do I feel like? It's, uh, why do I feel like maybe a? I feel like maybe we're going kind of. What do you call it? B is very Chrono specific. chronologically here. So I'm thinking A might be once in one dance of the Duke. No, I actually no. It is Wallflower Wager versus That's the Wallflower. Oh my gosh. Uh, I should really remember that. Now. Versus Governor's <laughs> Game. I just got my glasses. So the first B, is the Governor's A is Wallflower Wager. B is Governor's wow. Game. Oh, 25 books with how many sex? <laughs> Honestly, I'm upset. I just read Wallflower Wager. <laughs> Remembering uh, quotes has never been my skill. <laughs> there's always, it's always about the soft and the hard and like how many things can you think of to <laughs> mm -hmm. You do a wonderful That makes me think of, I don't know if anyone else got really deep in like America's Next Top Model and or Project Runway, but I feel like one of the phrases I was just like, I really wanted to play with the concept of like hard and soft. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, exactly. Don't we all? Don't oh, I mean, oh, we maybe all? Not all, but <laughs> Beth, oh. can you read out loud or no? I will I try. Have, yes, I know you these have are short. Ones, so. I will read them quietly in my best voice <laughs> and accent for you. In a husky all. whisper. <laughs> I, my mom might hear me, but that's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, Petals off skin slid with her palm, slipping over thick veins and rock hard knee. The softness, the strength, it would all be inside her soon. Mm. All right. And then, <laughs> oh my God, there's more veins. I, I told you. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, I like, through my fingers here. Mm -hmm. All right. He groaned as her fingers explored his full length, tracing each vein and bridge, skimming over the swollen, sensitive crown. Oh, my. Ugh. Which one's your preference? My preference? <laughs> I mean, here's the sad thing. They all sound quite similar. <laughs> no. I mean, that's to what's quote, making me a little concerned. To um, quote a queen of romance, call a dick a dick and move on. Like, you can't reinvent the we a wheel here, you know? No. <laughs> um, that's true, I suppose. Uh, I like A. Me too. The anticipation uh, is, is nice. Okay. A? Yeah. I, I like groaning, though. Mm, that's mm. true. Me too. I don't know. I can't choose. I wrote okay. them both. I hate them both. <laughs> <laughs> Has everyone seen that TikTok of the guy that drops the wood and he. Bradley Thor? Absolutely. Or, and that technically, his name is Thorin, but okay. And when he, they make him chop the wood with the wrong end of the axe, because then he gets really yes. into it, and then at the end he does his groan, and I was like, "Sir, I've missed the groan." <laughs> okay. like, I've missed really this. great groan. I need to okay. on TikTok more. So that was a one dance with the Duke versus B twice tempted by a rogue. Okay. Oh. Okay. Your turn, Alicia. Oh my <laughs> God. There's more. I know. A, she took her time exploring, stroking up and down the hot, steely thickness, filling her hand, skimming her thumb over the broad, silky crown. Or B, she let her fingertips wander the full length and the breadth of his arousal, tracing each ridge and vein, caressing, teasing. She circled her thumb oh around no. the belly. Oh no! <laughs> It's already with the drop of moisture that well there. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> We're all going to have the giggles. I know. This is a great oh, intro. Mm -hmm. Like, we're... I Break the I, ice. I have to go into some kind of fugue state to write these. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember nothing afterwards. That's fair. It's okay. I'm going to go with B because it's different, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we get the moisture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something additional. Yes. This is a formula here. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I like uh, I'm so always writing my heroines exploring. This is, yeah, it makes sense. They're curious girls. And they're, they are. They're mm -hmm. So this was A, do you want to start a scandal versus B, Duchess mm -hmm. Taylor? Ooh, can you bring up a bad wallflowers comment, Jay? Oh, wait. <laughs> this one? Yes. Absolutely. Caress is one of them. Mm -hmm. Caress is Caress. a good word. Okay, caressing is good. I'm a big fan of velvet in mm -hmm. any and every context, so I was also leaning B. Okay, Jackie, your turn. There's only four okay. slides. Now that we have guests, <laughs> my sister has friends in the house. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow, and these are long boys. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I didn't. <laughs> you can pair friends. Just kidding. They are all long boys. <laughs> they are. Like, they are. <laughs> okay. Um, and then a thick ridged column of heat was completely. That was completely. Excuse me. Different from anything else she'd ever touched. She skimmed one fingertip along the length. So curious how the skin moved with her touch. It's very Alice in Wonderland. Like I'm a curious, sponge. Or curious or... 
I'm rumpled. See, velvet again here. Uh, stretched over steel. She marveled at the idea. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, side note, I love how this one and the one from One Dance of the Duke is like at the end, there's like a pause about like, you know where this is gonna be soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Combination of softness and strength. Okay, okay. More softness, strength. There we go. It's a good um, duality. Well, I mean, it is, what it, like you said. Um, All it's so big. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> stroke gently as much as cramped circumstances. Okay, wait. Is this um, Lucy? I'm going to guess that this is Lucy and Jeremy in the a closet. Um, Everybody thinks they had sex in the closet. They didn't do it. They didn't get to even oh, third right? base in the closet. That's I don't right. think. I thought they had mm -hmm. sex in the closet at the very end of the epilogue, the, the last chapter. Maybe they did. I don't think so. I love I think that they're sitting them. around with uh -oh. Have we already created a Mandela effect? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, not the first ones. Everybody were like, oh. My favorite of uh, some there's you're not the first ones to say oh my favorite of your sex scenes or something is when they did it in the wardrobe and I'm like they didn't actually but I'm glad you remember it that way that's fine. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, right. Okay. I so think maybe no. Uh, that would oh Tessa did you have a favorite here? <laughs> I like how we have ah, rumpled velvet uh, over steel velvet and then ridged velvet over iron like the <laughs> little. Cramped circumstances. I'm trying to think about where somebody would have been their first time that is a cramped circumstance. Um, I don't know. Ooh, which ones have we not used? We haven't done much of the spindle quote yet. So I mean, I guess maybe. No, okay, it's not Minerva because Minerva would have compared it to a rock. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure she does. Um, I'm going to guess that B might have been in A Lady by Midnight. It was actually a night to surrender. Dang it. <laughs> so close. <laughs> All right. Wait, were they, they in the boat or something? I don't remember. Oh, no, that's I Spindle didn't. Cove still. I'm thinking I, Surrender of a Siren. Uh, oh, the steel. Could it be Beauty and the Black <laughs> No. Oh, I didn't do that okay. one. Sorry. That's all right. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't actually. There was. I mean, I guess that's not the that game. One. The game is which one I like the best. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't. It can be both. I mean, they're all they're all unique. This it's is true. Unique, this and it's actually they're not. But like the experience of each heroine, <laughs> unique. They each fit with their own person. So I don't know. I can't. So A was three nights with a scoundrel. B oh, was a night to surrender. Ooh, mm -hmm. rumble velvet. That makes sense for Julian. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I mean, I do sometimes if there is something like in the character's perspective that would, you know, like Minerva and Rox, mm -hmm. but she goes full more scale, I think, on Colin. But um, <laughs> science nerds go it. Okay, um, <laughs> um, I don't, but you know, not everybody's interests are, are um, um, lend themselves to that so much <laughs> like the prow of a ship that's, that's right. right oh my gosh <laughs> but this just this, this one was very misleading actually though oh is this my turn yes <laughs> okay <laughs> oh there's more there's more <laughs> There's, sorry, there's three more slides. Oh, we should just do this one and one okay. more, maybe. Okay, yeah. okay, one more, one more. Okay. <clears throat> I I, I, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to turn on oh, my Wisconsin for this one. <laughs> yes. Get ready here. <laughs> I almost spit I mean, out my water. You have, you don't... I have requested wine. 
Why not? It's Why not? No, somewhere. I'm gonna need it to get through this anymore. We'll do this but right, no, and then maybe you, we'll you. switch you. Child, <laughs> go away. Hey. No, well, you're. I, you don't want to hear it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like 17. I'm a teenager. Yes, oh. you're. But you're my child. <laughs> Trust oh. me, you don't want to hear your mother's descriptions. <laughs> Uh, I love it so much. Right. That's okay. okay. Anyway, go ahead. Go Does ahead. it make you feel better that my child liked one of my thirsty TikToks today? And I was like, Oh, I know. <laughs> She's nine. And I mean, it wasn't like super bad, but I was like, <sighs> I, I posted something on Twitter one day about how I had accidentally typed groined, like G R O I N T, <laughs> instead of ground. And, like, okay, so define this word. And my own kid was replying, like, erectile dysfunction, but bells, or something. And, like, <laughs> you're like, oh man, that is urban dictionary. It works. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Put it in there. Mm -hmm. oh. um, okay. <clears throat> He moved closer to the bed, his cock <laughs> jutting it before oh, him no. like the prow of a ship. He was certain <gasps> he'd never been harder in his life. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh my god. Hey. Oh my god, thank god this is a big glass of wine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, beam. His male organ jutted out from its nest of dark hair. Oh god. <laughs> Thick, dusky curve of flesh <laughs> that appeared at first glance quite alarming inside. <laughs> As she stared at him, her mind was doing estimations, drawing diagrams. How, how could? Why did? Her brain scarcely completed a question. She needed more observation. Okay. <laughs> I think okay. B is Alexandra. <laughs> is it? Oh. No, or it could be Gray. Oh. From Surrender of a Siren. It is Alexandra? Wait. No, it, uh, you actually didn't have a, you didn't have one for Surrender of a Siren, so that one's not in here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I know, I know. Of all the people. Sophia should have been the, Sophia, however you want to say her. Um, okay. I'm going to go with. B being uh, when a Scott ties a knot. Correct. She's drawing oh. diagrams. There you go. There we go. Yes. yes. So, did, wow. Did she uh, ever do that, though? Draw a diagram? In like she probably did at some point. Probably did. Well, I think in, in her head is what mm -hmm. it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beth, you should know A. Um, That's probably this one, right? Does it say yes to the Marquess? Yes. I can't see oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. It's say yes. <laughs> okay. to the and also, well, that doesn't I don't know if you like guys. Great. He's not that like poetic. It's just kind of like verbose. <laughs> mm -hmm. I saw that okay. and made me think of, I don't know if you guys are watching um, Ted Lasso. I don't want to assume, but most people are. And there's that part where he's like, that thing that I do with my dick where pe people think that it's curved. And she's like, I'm sorry, what thing? Like, rewind. <laughs> Can we revisit Rewind. That? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. I, I'm the last person in romance land who has to watch it. And it's not, I've like been saving it or something and I just haven't gotten around to it. And I need to, I need, like I'm waiting for a special occasion when I can really, like I know I can just sit and enjoy it. And I really just ought to just, you know, open that bottle of wine and just watch mm -hmm. it. But anyway, you're only. I just started it last forever. Week. Oh. Did we want to stop? We can stop here. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> Melissa, do you want to read one more? Why are you trying to torture me here? <laughs> Great. Okay, we'll do these two because I actually, these, these are really funny. Okay. Uh, I don't even remember. Okay, so that day when he neglected his <laughs> neglect with his neglect, <laughs> did perk with interest rise up and wave a jaunty ho there? Remember me? <laughs> or or B that day? Like she was remembering this in his. I don't remember. I didn't very didn't put what? a lot of context in this. Um, okay. <laughs> she was entirely unaware of the protocol when becoming acquainted with a man's rampant sex organ. Did she reach out and give it a handshake? 
touch one finger to the tip. <laughs> Bit in a plate. How do you do? I'm pretty sure that B is from Romancing the Duke. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, um, <laughs> is A a week to be wicked? I mean, that... No. no, A is uh, a week to be wicked. You do compare it to a rock, so that's not. It. Yeah, wait, but that's like the guy thinking about it. Oh, this. And I'm is like, who's no. who's forgotten their cock for a <laughs> while? Someone hasn't had sex in a long time because of a past trauma. Is it Reese? Nope. Ooh, is that. it from Any Duchess Will Do? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. It's poor Griff. He's like, remember me, your dick. <laughs> okay. Still here. Still hanging out. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So now that we're warmed up, <laughs> I think we melted the ice with that little one. Like, yeah, right. With our, it's, it's rock hard need and, and silky heat. <laughs> Everything is. Sorry, I snort. You're fine. <laughs> also, just a quick sidebar. If you guys have questions, drop them in the comments. And as mm -hmm. we're answer or as we're kind of going through questions, we might pop it up on the screen. Yep. I mean, I don't know whether to hope that that very few people are watching or that for your that I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? Hi, it's it'll be on YouTube forever. So. <laughs> I know. Oh well, it's okay. We're because all in this to put, together. Like, the eighteen plus thing on it. <laughs> oh yeah, Jack, don't forget to do that. Um, dude, let's kick it off with some questions. Beth, did you want to start with castles of our after? Yeah, let me just bring my notes back up here because I lost them. There we go. <clears throat> so. Castles Ever After, after our whole summer rereading, mm -hmm. is still my favorite series. Um, and a lot of readers were um, wondering, in a Scott, when a Scott ties in the Logan mentions he burned all of Maddie's letters except one. Do you know which letter that he kept? or what? You know, I looked at that a few hours ago when you, you had sent me the list of questions. I have no idea. I don't remember even writing that he synced one. I... <laughs> I, I'm i guessing that I had him have saved one just because at some point he like waves it in front of her like here's the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he needed that one my, receipt my, I think. My assistant <laughs> just sent me a text saying 30 minutes till you're live. I'm like time zone. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was gonna tell her. Um, <laughs> I should probably text her back and let her know in case she's. Do uh, you want to join us? <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Okay, where were we at? Logan. Maddie's and letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Maddie's letters. Oh yeah, I have no idea which one. Maybe the one where she killed him. I don't know. I really don't know. Is it? It's not in there anywhere. Mm -mm. I don't think so. I, I thought he would have tossed the one where she said kills him because he was upset mm. and that's why he threw them into the fire. Maybe he kept her poem. Maybe oh he my kept God, the that snail. Poem. No, that okay. wasn't her poem. That was the poem. Right, it was, he it was his poem. For her. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. <laughs> so that's in her step. Life. Yeah, when she gets him. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe, maybe it's the first one with the drawing of a snail. I don't know. It's a good question. Very it's whichever good. one you want it to be. Well, maybe maybe it's probably. one that is never in the, one of the many that isn't in the actual book. <laughs> Future newsletter fodder, maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. Go for it. <laughs> Please. All right. Um, so uh, another question was the beat of all in when a Scott ties in that. Is that a Thumbelina reference? No, I don't even know that it, there's something, there's a beetle ball in Thumbelina. There is. I don't know if everyone is familiar with the film from the 90s, Thumbelina. Oh, there's a film. There's a film. Okay. It is a great film. It's one of the like non-Disney 90s princess movies along with the Swan Princess mm -hmm. and uh, Quest for Camelot. Arguably not a princess movie, but it's there. Um, but there's a scene where she is dressed up as a beetle and oh. goes to the beetle ball. 
So I was like. No, just a, a happy coincidence. <laughs> I love the Beetle Ball. Okay. I um, I also loved Re Beetle Ball. The dress that she's wearing on the cover is the same like color with the lace trims as the one that she wears to the Beetle Ball. And I was like, ah. you know why? Because the covers are always made first. Oh, wow. The covers are done before the book is done. Interesting. Or huh. you know, at least through it's before it's through all the editing. So I take yeah. whatever dresses on the cover and make sure that it's in the book. That in the book. I like that. Makes that. Sense. that makes sense. Yeah. And looking but back. That bugs yeah. the crap out of me if it's not. And like as a reader, you know, I'm like, where does she wear a pink dress? And if she never mm -hmm. does, it will just drive me crazy. So even with the cover of A Lady by Midnight, which quite honestly, is one of my least favorite of my covers. But because I think it was just way too much. It didn't sell very well because it was like, he's like totally, she looks like she's been roofied. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you can remember it. He has like have her on the I'll floor. I'll go get it. And her, no, she's she's like scrawl, like senseless <laughs> with gorgeous hair. Her hair is gorgeous and her dress is gorgeous. And oh, but like, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, there's some like, thrusting. But there's more like there a, is okay, some thrusting. It's like they're doing it on the cover. And it is. Like, I think it would have been a better step back than cover. Okay, that's fair. I think it was too much. So anyway. Um, I like it. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's a beautiful it image. Is. But like, as far as, anyway. So that one, I got that cover and I was Not like, whoa, time. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is back when authors and of all authors, you know, newer ones like myself at that time, didn't have that much to say about our covers. You kind of got it unless it was like something screamingly horrid. You you didn't really have a whole lot to, to um, say about it so it was just like oh it's pretty <laughs> um are they like doing it like right there <laughs> he's like between her bare legs well anyway so i wrote a scene in the book where they like do it on the ground and she's in her thrown up her blue dress because it's like during their their ball dedication mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i was like i guess i'm gonna have to write them screwing on the floor <laughs> oh no, that's so sad. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> it worked pretty good. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so um, we kind of stumbled on an old conversation on Twitter that you had, I think, with Bree from Kit Roca about Zayhas to the Marquess quest mm -hmm. as um, Rafe presenting as neurodivergent or maybe being ADHD. Can you speak about that a little bit more? Oh yeah, that's for sure intentional. And actually like I, as I was writing, it was about the time that my son and, and husband were both like finally getting diagnosed with ADHD. So like, I, I think actually researching for rape was what made us, made me and then them sure that they had it because it runs really strong in my husband's family. And actually by now, now my daughter has been diagnosed with it as well. And, um, and yeah, because we, we always had thought like maybe my son was, had ADHD, but then we thought that like, no, kids are always getting into trouble if they have ADHD, which isn't the truth. That isn't the case. And, mm -hmm. and so I finally, cause he was, you know, he was not the kid who was like, running around and pushing people or anything like that. So um, while I was researching that book, I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He has all this other stuff, like every other. So yeah, um, so yes, that was intentional. Definitely, um, it definitely intersected with things going on in my own life as so many other parts of my books do, so. Mm -hmm. I have ADHD and I remember there was a moment, I mean, there were several moments, but there's a moment where Rafe is kind of working himself up 
And Cleo notices it and is like, in this fight from X amount of years ago, well, how did you, what was the thing that you did to win? And like that like moment where he's like, well, I remember what that was, it was back when this, like, and I remember reading that, I was like, oh my God, I totally do that. Oh, really? And I love that moment. I thought it was really cool, really special. Good. Mm -hmm. I don't remember writing that at all, but I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, <laughs> you read, you guys read it last month, and I last read it probably, mm -hmm. you know, five years ago. So. No, After rereading the whole time, Beth is like, "Say yes to the Marquess superiority. It is the best Aww. book." True. And I was like, "Okay, yeah, Beth is." Smart. And but on the reread, this that one was my top book. Oh, so that's good. awesome! I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. I I didn't read for like a month or two during a certain point in the pandemic, and that was the book that brought me back oh, so, oh that's good so it was like i'd read it obviously before you know and it was very it's very like okay like here's my comfort read everything about this book works for me and it just helped like get my brain back Thanks, you know oh. <laughs> i may or may not have found a dress to recreate that at some point uh it's on my amazon wish list oh mm -hmm. it's so beautiful it stuff, is so pretty. Is so good too. Uh, nice. I don't know if this will horrify you or make you happy, but I I annotated mine while we were Aww. reading it because Aww. I'm not obviously getting rid of it anytime. So Aww, that's it was so a lot of fun to like with pencil go through and highlight. Speaking of covers and also things <clears throat> that I would have changed if I could. She's way too skinny on that cover. Like the girl on the cover is not Cleo. She's so skinny. It's, it's like you can see ribs. It's just like, oh man, not what. But anyway, we're working on that for now. For right, exactly, exactly. Now I would be able to say more, and they would be more interested in doing it properly. So mm -hmm. it's um, absolutely it is what it is. Step back should be with Badger and the phallic mountain in the background. Oh wait, um, that yeah. one's oh, for a lady, by a lady by midnight. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You guys know what I'm talking about with the phallic mountains, like the chocolate. Is there a specific mountain? Okay. Well, is it? It's a it's a slope. It's a mountainside, right? Where mm -hmm. like the uh, old tiny prehistoric people carved their chalk hills, right? Mm -hmm. So they carved like figures into the chalk, like great big ones, right? That you can mm -hmm. see from a large distance. And so the one in that's near where Spindle Cove would be is just the guy with the two staffs, you know, he's got two um, spear type things. Um, but the other one, I think it's called is CERN, the giant of CERN. C -R -E. oh, yep, I found it. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge deck, and it's, like, it's pointing straight up. <laughs> straight up. Um, so that's what we're talking about. That's the phallic mountain. Uh, we'll put it in our Discord for. We'll keep the stream <laughs> visual. <laughs> wow. So we'll put it in the Discord for everyone. And that's that was from there. which book was that in again? That's so, in a lady by midnight. That, yeah, I'll put it in that channel. Boom. Paste. There we go. Okay. Wow, I'm so glad we looked that up just now. <laughs> I'm surprised we didn't during the read along. It didn't come up. Um, it's something. I love it. I love it so much. Um. Okay. I. Oh, this was a good one. <laughs> okay. How do you think? Edmund Parkhurst fared after being a little traumatized at age eight and do you want to start a scandal? <laughs> I think he's fine. He's fine. Fine. Let's get over that stuff. And you know, I mean, it probably <laughs> always give him a little shudder, but I think as he got older, he would appreciate the fact that his yeah. parents were clearly in love and uh Better hanky panky than murdering. Right, right. <laughs> if those are the two options. <laughs> He's, I'm sorry, he was such a great character. He goes with the pool stick and like attacks. 
<laughs> oh my god. Poor so vigilante. Oh, you blame him. And then you <laughs> start learning how to sword fight with the cool stuff. I don't know. I think Pierce, what does he say? That he would hire him at one point? I don't know. Maybe. I think so. so. I think so. I think maybe. <laughs> Don't ask for his book. <laughs> I don't know how to write a Victorian story. <clears throat> All right. And then, did you have a specific um, inspiration behind Izzy and the Good Night Tales? Yes. That is the question I have an answer Ooh. to. So that is, was kind of at the height <laughs> of um, Game of Thrones popularity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where the show is getting to the point where the books stop, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, like, what would happen if your dad was George R. R. Martin and he oh. suddenly, sorry, died before completing the series or the next, you know, book or whatever and left everybody hanging for the rest of their lives. Um, and how like everybody would be just constantly bothering you for answers or, you know, just basing their fandom around you and, and you would never be able to just kind of get on with um, your life. And um, so that's where that came from. That that's fascinating. But, you know, we all know what happened with that was that he didn't finish the books and the show went on. And and neither of the showrunners like understand themes. Seven, like halfway through season eight. And then. Uh, <laughs> I'm I mean, still mad about it. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions. Shocker. I do here's here's your question. Torment or Jamie? Mm. Litmus test. Okay, but here's here's my question in response to that. Jamie before the last season or Jamie at the end of the last season? Because to me, those are two different characters with a lot of different... I mean, yeah, they are, but I feel like Jamie was a very slow arc. Like, he was... Oh, but it was so good. Though. I don't... And the road trip and the... Uh, yeah. It worked for oh, me. Oh yeah, they had a whole lot, you know. Um, at one time, I kind of shipped um, Brienne with um, the Hounds because mm. you know I was like, I can I, see that too. When they were on that road trip with Arya, I was I wanted mm. Arya to play like some kind of parent trap hijinks and like get the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so kind good. Of, like, chemistry, right? They um, did, yeah. and she and kicked his butt. Be kind of a found family. <laughs> um, yeah, but. I don't know. Anyway, I would honestly I love a romance. See, I like Tormund, but there was something about, I think also I just really like the actor, Nikolai Coster Waldau. Like yes. he was very charming. And like when they interviewed together, like he and Gwendolyn Christie, like the oh, chemistry oh. was so good. So what oh. I would really love is, is, I mean, we do have spoiler alert, which has like that energy and, and was kind of, but like, I would love like a medieval road trip enemies to lovers book. That's them. Mm. Oh, I have one for you. Hello. Elizabeth uh, Kingston. Have you read any of her books? I have my sister is a huge fan, particularly of Desire Lines, mm -hmm. but I have not read That's the one. That's the one. Hmm. And then the first one in that series, the female main character is written as being ugly like and not like oh she just thinks she looks ugly but she's really beautiful but like she's actually like got weird teeth or something like i don't know but like and he loves her and falls in love with her and she's gotten a lot of heat for writing not heat but like if you're like why is she ugly it's like mm -hmm. yeah it's always funny to me when like why isn't she ooh. why does she have any reservations about falling in love with the first man she meets yeah i don't know sorry there's a lot of People are hard on heroines. That's they all. are. And I'm always like, team heroine. I'm going to punch that guy in the face. <laughs> Be fine. I always anyway. kind of chuckle when we run into, like, 
the heroine is describing herself as like, oh, like I'm unattractive. Like my bosom is unfashionably large. I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. My hips are too full. <laughs> my eyes are too large for my face. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, okay, sweetie. <laughs> 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 oh, all right. Um, that was all the questions about that that series. Yes, Jane, Spain, and Brienne. Oh. That's right. Did we want to do some FMK? Do we have that? Set up? We have FMK, or we have the Build Your Own Spindle Cove game. Mm -hmm. Yes, we also have a little bit more questions. You guys are so creative. I love it. Um, <laughs> Tessa, which would you rather play? What would you rather? Um. Well. I, whatever you have queued up. I don't want to, it's like, don't wait, make can I, I have a which question. Which is going to be a real problem if I have to do F, Mary, Kale on my own characters. Did I do that last time? Mm -mm. No. Really? I don't think you did. I, I, I can't imagine. But I'm curious to hear what, what you guys would do. <laughs> oh, we could do that too. Do you want to do that? Let's do that. Um, Wait, real quick, can I ask a question? It's it's one of the Girl Meets Duke questions, but mm -hmm. I want to know now. Okay. That's <laughs> yes. Fine. It is, did you have a visual reference for the wedding dress episode for Annabelle Worthing? Like, was there, for this unicorn vomit dress, <laughs> was there something you thought of? No, sorry. It just was like every ugly, tacky thing I could think of. Okay. Sorry. That reason, I think is my favorite intro of all is. of your like first. It's so good. Um, In my like head, it. I immediately thought of Sarah's dress from the labyrinth. I mean, it's not tacky, but it's it's just like overwrought. Made. I definitely yeah. definitely yeah. should have like an eighties vibe. I like the the yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the poopy sleeves. Yeah, I think the labyrinth dress, like you said, Melissa, is like the starting point for my visual yeah. reference, and then it just mm -hmm. goes. Upper. It's like maybe <laughs> double the beating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're Let's ready start. for you, Melissa. Okay. And people in the audience can play along too. Yes. Feel free to shout Let's out. Answers nice. up. Okay. I'm not going to be able to really see you when I do this, but fuck me. It's Mary. okay. All right. Gem, Gray, Toby. Is <laughs> Okay, I can go first. I'm ready. I'm gonna marry yes. Jem. Gonna ten out of ten. Agree. Gray mm -hmm. and eh, bye to Toby. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, same. Toby. I want to. I, I want to do it on the Toby. boat. Though. Okay, the boat has to be with me and Gray. <laughs> the Ooh, <rest> yes. <laughs> Pull okay. a like Hattie and Wit and uh, tie him to the mast. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll be like, <laughs> shh. I was <be> like, shh. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I agree. Tessa. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Me, I can't. Okay. Um, yeah. Or you can I, friend. I you don't want to kill. You can friend zone. That every heroine should alternately want to fuck, marry, and kill her hero. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that may That's be fair. Yes. a good this book. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with this as my new philosophy. Like at I one love point it. in I every book, I should want to. Fuck, marry, and kill. Like, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Oh, here we go. Spencer, Reese, and Julian. Oh, I might have opinions about this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I marry I... Spencer without question and reserves. Absolutely, marry Spencer. I feel bad about just fucking Reese because. You know, he's like that same hero where everyone's like, I just want to fuck you because you're a soldier and like you're big and brawny and like, so I feel bad, guilty. So I would marry him. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't kill him either. See, I would feel bad, but I would still do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm too nice. Um, I would fuck Spencer Ooh, and friend zone Julian. I'm wrong. <laughs> Mm, this is a good point from Rhonda. Thank you for that observation. You are correct. Props to Toby in that regard. I think everybody just tries to block out that book, which is why not Toby's. <laughs> I will say there's some like he they he ties her up for a moment. Like that was it's true. I was here for that. It was mm -hmm. a good time. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed very much. Beth. <laughs> 
I love Spencer so much. This was my first time reading it, and that was one of my top five. It's so good. Mm-hmm. But also, we had lots of Pride and Prejudice references, and I'm trash for those. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Beth, did you have a choice or no? Oh, I'll pass. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. None of them. Yeah. Um, so I want them Bram. all. Is that a thing? <laughs> yes. Bram, oh. Thorne, or Griff? This is okay. Oh. I'm, I'm like guessing in my mind what the consensus is going to be of everyone else. Okay. Oh, God. I would marry Thorne. I would fuck Griff. And I would kill Bram. Sorry, buddy. Yep. Yeah. That's I'm what I thought. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that desk sucks with Griff. Can't say no to that. <laughs> very good. It's very good. It is too hard. It is very hard. Those covers um, are all beautiful. Very tonally. Yeah. Cohesive. Okay. I, I'm going to marry Griff. F. Thorne. Friend zone. Griff. You know, in all fairness, Griff is a duke. Mm-hmm. That would be the more. I'd be totally living the life. Like, way. come on. You, you know? would. Very true. <laughs> but also societal pressure. And and he, the buys her, he buys her books. He does, oh, yeah, buy, he her does books. buy her that's, books. That's very compelling. Mm-hmm. Shit, I'm very changing compelling. my mind. I'll marry Griff instead. <laughs> she'd be happy. I've got two kids. <laughs> like, she'd get her grandchildren and we all set. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> the mother in law's a problem. <laughs> she wasn't so bad. Okay, sorry. <laughs> This is so I had to put the oh. I had to put the Highwood oh, this um, is too hard. heroes together. Oh. Sorry. Oh I had to put the high woods together and make it hard for everybody. Don't kill this me. This is brutal. I can't pick. <laughs> uh I'll go first then because I would marry Colin, fuck Aaron, and kill Pierce. <laughs> See, I think I would marry Aaron. Oh, he's just Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm not making any decision otherwise. I don't know I don't know anything except that I'm marrying. Yeah, I'm gonna marry and fuck Aaron and friends on the other two. They yeah, can just do whatever they want. Oh, he's just so good. I'm sorry. <laughs> what does the audience say? Because I can't see the comments. So, anybody? Uh, Rhonda says yep, there we go. Aaron, Mary, Colin, kill Pierce, but I love Pierce. I do like Pierce. <laughs> I, feel like it would be, him then. I think it would be it would take a lot to kill Pierce. Like it yeah, would. You would really have to outsmart Ooh. him. And I, I think he would like I think he would die with like this smile on his face, like, yeah. She like bested me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be really happy. I may only be in love for the next ten seconds. <laughs> Was Peter Faraday the proto Piers? Like he's ah. also a gentleman spy. Like he is a little bit, but then there's a lot of gentleman spies. And, but definitely, I can see that. Okay, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Ray is uh, Rafe and Bo- yes. <laughs> oh, Ray? oh, but it's so. Well, you guys are Rafe fans, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm marrying Rafe. I'm effing. It Logan. might be a little chaotic <laughs> though. With a- <laughs> I know our kids would be. Um, they would. Almost certainly have ADHD also. So, you know. That's fine. <laughs> it would be yeah, a fun I, and chaotic house. I'm living that life. So. <laughs> In like a great way. Like, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Mary Rafe, fuck Logan, kill Ransom. Sorry, mm. God. <laughs> Even though I feel Ooh, for bad. Risa, <laughs> Mary Nick Whimsy, any day, every day. Yeah, Logan is a pretty hard second contender there. Mm-hmm. He's, he's pretty mm-hmm. great. Okay, I also like this observation from Lacey. Uh, I think that is also very likely. <laughs> 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 I feel like you might end up fucking Piers in the process of killing yeah. him. Yeah, you know, I see it's, one of those like possible. wrestling Mr. and Mrs. Smith type things. Yes, where, yes. Know, like, oh yes. My God, yes, yes. Absolutely. Okay, last one. Ash, oh. Chase, and Gabriel. This one's hard. Is it though? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I want to marry Ash. I like him. I don't know about the other two though. I'm going to marry Gabriel and F. Chase because I think he'd be really fun to do that with. <laughs> and 
Sorry, Ash, your friend owned. Nothing against uh, you. I'd marry you too, but I can only choose one. Uh, I want to marry Chase only because I want Rosamond and Daisy in my life. Aww. Aww. Um, fuck Gabriel and friend zone Ash. I can't kill him. Ash is a great friend. Mm-hmm. He is. Mm-hmm. I feel like something we've really enjoyed over the last three books is the way that the the whole squad is present in all of the books. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like you get the whole, okay, so I know we're technically seconds and thirds, but I just like to know, am I the third? Or is he, <laughs> like, that's such a great moment. <laughs> so, good. so good. And they totally turn into, you know, the protector brother figures for the other ones as the series goes on and we're like you were just yeah. doing this yourself sirs so don't be quite so <laughs> judgmental <laughs> or even the moment when um ash is like alex you know who this guy is he's bad news and chase is like thank you this is what i was saying <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I can't wait to see them in the next book because I want to know how Gabriel fits into the craziness of Ash and Chase. And I feel the like of them show up. I feel like he will be chilling, taking care of like Bixby in the corner with Penny. Like the other two are gonna be like, oh, like jockeying around. He's just gonna be like, oh, eye roll. This is true. A little bit, yeah. He's pretty eye rolly toward the other two, like just in general, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. So speaking of Girl Meets Duke, do we want to dive into the questions? Yeah. Or I guess the rest of the questions. Okay. So this one's like super specific. But in Governess Game, Alex points out Tortuga on the map to Daisy and Rosamund. Jack thought this was a Pirates of the Caribbean reference, but I thought you meant you wanted to say Tortola, which alludes to your first series. We want to know who was right. I'm pretty sure. I'm, the, yeah, I read this question. I was like, "What?" I don't even remember who it is. I'm pretty. I, sure. I don't. I don't know where See, she. Or where we can I was be right. is she talking about ports or something. They're talking about pirates. Yeah, and oh, like how they're pirates. Probably meant Tortuga. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. In all fairness, okay. Tortuga was also a real place, so yes. it likely oh, no, would. Be a, it was. But mm-hmm. I was and like, Tortuga it was could not be in, like a particularly big pirate haven or anything like that. It was... Unfortunately. True. True. Okay. This one's a little obscure because I was doing some Google searching and I found this image. But have you ever seen the Babysitters Club club edit with Governess Game? So it's um, a podcast. There's like, a, they had, wait a minute, somebody actually compares so, those two together or something? So or they started just, off, I think the podcast started off reviewing the Babysitter's Club, and then I think mm-hmm. they picked this one because there were kids involved. Okay. Um, well, so you should pull it up. I'll, and, yeah. I'll, I'm pulling it up. Because I saw, like, my daughter sent me a screen cap of the Babysitter's Club episode with the morbid kids. And, like, this is, like, the governess okay. game. Sorry. But... Uh-oh. I, I don't think it's that. what you're talking Hello. about. You have to send me a link. Sorry, sorry. Hold on. It's right here. It's this one it? right here. Oh, my God. The <laughs> list. So this I can't is... believe somebody did that. That's so awesome. <laughs> so I guess the two people talked about, read the book and then started talking about it. And I think they changed their book, their podcast name. But, yeah, they did read some romances um, and Governess Game was one of them. So I thought That's it was so really cute. interesting to come across. Yeah, that's so cute. I love it. Governess Game is the one that Michelle Obama read, right? Oh, yeah, totally. She totally read it. <laughs> Absolutely. She grabbed it right out of Ellen's hand. Yeah. And- like, that's the one for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Now she reads all my stuff. <laughs> so the I'm next very question sure. is, many of us noticed that Alex and Penny, we, we get to know of Alex and Penny a little bit better um, as secondary characters in the books, but it seems we learned very little about Nicola right up until Wallflare Wager. Was that intentional? I think it was just serious. Because I didn't know as much about Nicola. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, sometimes it takes a and, while for the um, characters to come. Yeah, through. no, I, you know, she's always kind of the like sort of practical and literal minded one of mm-hmm. the group, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, Penny is sort of the voice of whimsy and romance, and 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 Nicola's the foil for that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, she's I think what 
what's in the earlier books is more about like the things she does than it is the things that are going on inside her because that's just kind of, I think, um, it's just, she's a little harder to get to know. She doesn't talk about feelings the way that Penny does, for example. So, so yeah, but she has them. She mm -hmm. does. I think it was really interesting to see that she does say, oh yeah, I have experiences of the matter of the heart. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the book today and I was like, Nicola, I know what are you hiding? <laughs> Um, okay, and then the last question I ha we had to know, how is Hubert the otter? Because I was very sad he was left. I, you know what, you're not <laughs> the only one. And here's the thing, I almost just said this when you were talking about Gabriel fitting in with the guys. I was like, well, he's actually missing in kind of one of the scenes of the wildflower wager because he and Penny go to the country to visit Hubert. So, like, <laughs> because... Oh. Is there an audio issue? Oh, yeah, there we go. There I we see go. you all now. Sorry. Um, the yeah. So I hopefully will allay concerns on that. Like you're not gonna see Hubert, but the idea being that they find him. Okay, he's there. <laughs> he's okay. Found a Mrs. Yes. Hubert and is maybe there, raising his own family. Many Mrs. Hubert, you should say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a whole harem. <laughs> so Excuse me. Jackie, did you want to jump into the next Oh, one? yeah. We've got a few more that are not, like, specific to either of the series. Um, but we were wondering if there was ever a book where you ended up switching the title. Um, just out of curiosity. Not since some of the early days. I mean when oh yeah uh trying to think i mean you know because a lot of times i can't think of it sometimes the right title is just like right there and it's obvious and then sometimes um you know it takes my editor and me like a whole bunch of different lists yeah. and stuff um mm -hmm. one of the hardest i think to title was when a scott ties a knot i was very unsure about that title i was like are you sure it's not too long i think i made it up but then mm -hmm. she's like no we like it so, but it came out okay so um so i mean there are definitely books where i don't have the title while uh when i'm first writing them but uh i think they come to you probably kind of, yeah i mean eventually they they all end up with the title eventually i can't i can't think of any particular ones that were um specifically changed late in the game or anything like that another one we were wondering and this was mostly because i very often see like sarah mclean bemoaning on social media that like her book is in the revisions and so like what we were kind of wondering is like, is there like a space where your story really starts to click? Like, is it really the first time you go through or is that more in revisions in terms of like, your writing? Or maybe it's different all the time, keeps you. I guess it's different all the time. I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I don't know. Like, I have no good answers to these questions because if I knew where the story would come to me, I would like do that part first or something like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it just, um, yeah, it's just unfortunately a new, a new challenge every time. Mm -hmm. Right, and another one, sorry, I'm typing this in the chat so we can get it on the screen. Um, what another one we were wondering was, oh no, did we lose Melissa? There we go. Sorry, Sorry about that. Uh, another we were wondering is like, were there any like looking back at some of your books? Were there some that were like more like difficult than others? And like, was which one was maybe the problem child? Oh, well, kind of like a whole problem brood. I I don't. <laughs> what? I mean. Oh my God, they're all particularly difficult. I mean, I I don't, I, 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 I can't think of a single book that was like easy for me to write. 
Mm-hmm. Sorry. I, it's, it, no, it, that makes sense to me. I mean, the ones that I've completely like scrapped and started over on, um, like halfway through those or more, those would be ones like Romancing the Duke. Um, it's a completely different story the first oh. few times I tried to write it. Uh, when it's got ties with not, same. Uh, any that just will do, same. Mm-hmm. I think those are the ones where I completely, completely just threw away like whole half or two thirds of a book and started over. Yeah. And they are ironically some of my better books. So yeah. I'm pretty sure Scott Ties the Knot was my first Tessa Dare. Yay, and it kept you coming back. So that yeah, I think that was it. mine, too. I think that was mine, too. And I feel like epistolaries can be tricky because... Oh, my God. On, yes. Because, like, I remember... I can't remember what it was, but I was reading one recently where, like, a lot of this, like, the romance was tied up in their letter writing, but you never saw the letters on page. And so... <gasps> I know. And so I feel like that can be really tricky to manage when like po- like a lot of the connection is uh, is but also when it's like done well you're like oh the le- like the reading of the letters is really fun so like, okay another one we had was like i feel like sometimes when you're reading an author's work there can be like i mean obviously when you're looking at an an artist's canon per se like there are evolutions and like shifts and changes and so like we were wondering were there any that like you like had like conscious like thought about like oh i want to start doing this or like i want to change how i write this or was it more just like ah look i've i've had some i've noticed some you know what i mean like were there any Mm -hmm. that you like thought about or was it more just kind of a an evolution that you saw as you looked back. Oh, I I mean, there's definitely a big shift when I moved to Avon. And I think that a lot of that is, um, it's partly me and it's partly like working with my editor because she has a great sense of what readers respond to and what I can give readers that they'll respond to. And I think that's where I started, you know, my books definitely got lighter and funnier with Spindle Cove. But also I started to write my more quirky type of heroines and I kind of found my groove in that. And so, um, so yeah, I think, and the lighter and funnierness of that has kind of stems from the characters as much as it does just like a desire to be funny or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, I think um, there was definitely a bit of a change there and I'm, very glad for it. I think that I, I found my niche mm-hmm. in, with the Swindle Cove series. So. Another one we had that I'm intrigued about is, is there an author you'd consider co-writing with? And this was mostly sound because Benedict, one of Sarah McLean's famous side characters, um, who people are always asking about his book, she has said, like, if she ever wrote a book for him, she would only write it if she was writing it with you. So we were wondering if, like, likewise, if there was an author really? that you would co-write She's with. She's not told me that. That's hilarious. I think it was in an interview or something. Um, I, there's, I like Sarah way too much to inflict that on her. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I would never write with some co-write with anyone that I didn't hate with a passion because they would get, <laughs> they would despise me by the end of it. Even just like collaborating in anthologies and stuff, I generally feel like the worst because I'm always the one who is late or changing things at the last minute. So, um, yeah, I, I think that I have a really hard time. I think I would have a hard time sharing a story and not making all the decisions in it. I feel uh, that. <laughs> partly because I like to sort of own my own story and partly because I just changed my mind so much. So mm-hmm. I would 
freak out if I didn't have the ability to do that, I think. So, um, I, so yeah, I, I don't, I look at people who co-write, I have good friends who are co-writing teens and I just see, I just, it amazes me how they do it, but I, I couldn't even like, I can't even do tabletop role-playing games very well because <laughs> no. it, it drives me crazy that somebody else is making up the story and in my head I'm like D -d -d -d, but it would be better this way like it, I mean, maybe it would or maybe it wouldn't but like or I'm always blurting out dialogue for somebody else oh you should say this you know and it's like it's, it's it may, I'm, it, I'm the most annoying person in the world to play this with so um yeah I just don't think that I think I'm too much of a control freak when it comes to the story itself. And the that makes sense. That's a plot funny for me. I, like two like writers that hate each other co-writing. That's a rough and falling in love. <laughs> writing. I gotta worry. I gotta warn you though. Like you think epistolary is hard. You know, <laughs> like just uh, writing about writers very hard. Yeah. yeah. I feel that though. It's I feel not like... a spectator sport. Yeah, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. oh, it's boring to watch. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, it's not like, you know, I'm a boxer, so you can like see a whole lot of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and, like if the books that I can remember that are about writers, like most of the time, like the first one that I thought of was Beach Read. And like mm -hmm. most of the time on page, they're not writing. Like yeah, they're no. talking about writing or they're preparing to write. They're doing but their they're rituals, not, yeah. They're not writing for very much yeah. of the book. No, right. no, they're not. Well, like right. my closest reality to that was grad school and writing like my thesis and all of that. And I was like, ooh, I was a scary person. Well, you can pick you can that. a book about two co-writers who've never actually met in person and then they meet and they mm. hate each other. <laughs> it that sounds like relationship. that I like. <laughs> I don't know. That just sounds too scary. That sounds like a horror movie to me. Oh, um, no. <laughs> oh man. Um, Jackie, do you want to put that next question up since... Uh, yes. This is actually a question Melissa asked, so I think you should ask this, <laughs> Melissa. I will. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. It was it was, it was was a joke, but then they were like, okay, you have to ask Tessa. So the name game is a fun motif that runs through a lot of your books, uh, with, To Be Wicked, Romancing the Duke. Have you ever thought about drawing inspiration from the film How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and have a heroine name a man's dick? Like, come up with different names throughout the book. Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> it sounds like there's, I mean, you've done everything. So I figured, like, <laughs> Maybe this is a way to get around all the soft and silky. You yeah, know. come up with the, <laughs> the interesting pet name. I don't know. What does she name it in the uh, movie? It's something about uh, Princess Sophia, and then there's one other name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just. I said it on the last live, and then I was like, and then everyone's like, you have to ask Tess, and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, same game, so. Is in there in my head, so we'll see. We'll see. I feel like it would have to be a joke, and he no, would hate yeah, it. I mean, yeah, he would hate, hate it. it, and she would do it and start laughing every time she comes up with a new one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Never know. Maybe. He's like, I will seduce you. And she's like, no, you won't. Because I'm going to make a name for your penis. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I like the idea of her, like, maybe naming it so she doesn't feel so intimidated. You know? mm -hmm. that, yeah, yes. That work. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it doesn't feel as big and scary if I name it, you know, Bunny or whatever. So. Bunny. <laughs> I don't know. It's a terrible name. Kitten. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. Oh, I want to share. That's a good point. You gave me an idea, and now I'm going to automatically reject it just because it wasn't. No, that's not true. People have given me, give me ideas, and I take them all the time. I just, you know, write them. I just, I just write them myself. I'm okay with ideas. I'll steal those anytime. Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. Coffee shops are a great place for stealing ideas. I love listening to people. I miss shops. people watching. Yes. Oh, totally. There was one time I was in a coffee shop. This was back in, and it's so funny because it was back in Washington State in like this very small town that I grew up in. And I was like sitting doing like some sketching homework. And there was this couple who were very obviously on a first date. And in the course of this like first date, one of them talked about like, oh yeah, I was doing a project at Cannes Film Festival and I met Samuel L. Jackson. And like, oh yeah, well I was like working with this like nonprofit uh, organization for like, I don't know, like something really like, like world world peace e and was like, oh, well, 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 yeah you know it was like oh well and it wasn't like one upping each other but like they literally both kept being like oh yeah i was like paragliding in fiji last last month <laughs> and, like, like they both were just like talking about these insane things and this whole time i was just like sitting next to them like doing my homework like what, what? <laughs> 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 yeah That's so good I think that is a perfect segue to your question, Jackie. Speaking of, have there been, you know, like sometimes people will be like, oh my God, I was in this coffee shop and like this thing happened and I met this, like, you know what I mean? Like very like romance heroine moments. Like, so we're wondering if there were any that like stuck out to you in your own life of just like. I mean, I've spilled lots of stuff and, <sighs> and been clumsy plenty of times, but it's never led toward <laughs> meeting. Uh, there's never been a guy around when I needed to zip or unzip on oh, I, but, um, I will say, I do think of two coffee shop things and I, I'm not sure why they just came to mind, but they did. Okay, so one was, neither one of these is any time recent, but they weren't like, two, I was definitely married. Like they weren't any, they weren't actually romantic moments, but they were just like, one time I was coming in like cross paths with somebody who was coming out of the coffee shop while I was coming in and he had the bluest eyes I've ever seen. Like literally uh, like you, see, you, 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 we write these cliches about breathtakingly blue eyes or whatever, like startling blue or whatever. And it was like, whoa, I felt like, I felt that blue hit me. It was wild. I've never seen any, I've never had that with anybody else. Just that one rando guy that I passed and, but I was just like, those were some blue eyes. <laughs> that was one. And then another time I was sitting and working in a Starbucks um, and um, this guy came up to me and he was like, this is before this was cool. He, you know, had like the big, he was total um, sort of a lumber sexual type, you know, a big beard and like the big chunky boots and all this sort of stuff. And he's like, I think, is that your car out there? I said, yeah, like that shitty piece of junk. Yes. Um, he, he's, he said, I think this guy scratched it as he was parking in the next spot. And I was like, okay, this car, my car is a piece of shit. It doesn't matter. It was, it was total. Um, it was like an old PC cruiser that tells you everything. Um, <laughs> and, um, but I was like, oh, that's very kind. Like, and he's like, well, he's right over there. Do you want me to talk to him for you? And I was like, <laughs> oh, that was sexy. <laughs> <I> <laughs> ever. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Right. That was like, that, yeah. And it, and it was with this sort of vaguely menacing, you know, thing. I kind of wish I'd taken him up on it now, but I didn't. How funny. Mm, I like that. So it was like those little <laughs> random things where it's like, oh. Those flutters are real, like, you know? <laughs> when we were planning this um, interview, we were talking about, you know, some real stuff. And mine was recently, I went to the dentist and it was the new to me dentist. And I had my glasses off because I was a dentist. And, I, you know, my hygienist did the work. And then the dentist came in, he had a very nice voice and I couldn't see anything because I'm... I can't see with all my glasses. And then he was like, you really need a night guard because you've been grinding your teeth. And I was like, great. Yep. Okay. And then I put, we were all done and I, I put my glasses on and I looked up and he was like the most beautiful person I've oh ever seen God. in my life. And I was just like, Aww. like, nope, nope, nope. I would, I would. <laughs> Come back <Yeah>. up. <laughs> Don't want to know. Can't ever go back. <laughs> Yeah, mine was an X-ray tech, Maybe it's and I not a night guard. And so I was like in the like 
the like paper gowns at the hospital because I had to get like an x-ray to make sure my body wasn't broken. And he was really beautiful. And I was like, oh, I, this is unfortunate for me. <laughs> Not my best. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Just> like, <sighs> Sorry, I have no interesting stories. <laughs> It's a little thing, though. Like, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a big whirlwind romance. I think it's those little moments that, that writing romance is, is really about, and that's what makes things, makes a really good book. It's just those kind of, um, those, those small, I have to use the word moment like five times now, but yeah, those small little swatches of time where something really does, you know, make you fluttery or get your hot in the face. And, and um, I'm totally like that. I can't talk at all when somebody, you know, <laughs> some dentist or whatever. No, it's just like 45. I've been married for 20 years. And like, I, you know, you're really handsome. I can't even talk. <laughs> um, I work at a public library and the, the firefighters called and were like, oh, you just opened your new library. We need to come get the key for the, there's like a box that the firefighters <laughs> have a key for so they can get in in case of an emergency. And right. I was like, yeah, sure, come on down. I swear to you, the entire truck pulled up and then five of them came in, five yeah, the one key, and they were all wearing like the suspenders and the pants and they and smelled like shirt. smoke and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yep. It's like, you can come back anytime. I'm not yeah. sure if that's the right one. <laughs> right. Oops, off the alarm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of two questions. Mm -hmm. um, besides not counting Darcy, because, you know, he's kind of a league of his own. Uh, favorite Austin hero. Uh, and then favorite Austin adaptation. Oh. Okay. Well, this is really hard for me because as a very oh, no. um, <laughs> but okay, and a lot of this is actually in Love Letters from a Lord. Speaking of epistolary novel, uh, God, that was it has been really hard to finish because of I was like, oh, epistolary, epistolatory, epistolary. <laughs> I can't I can't say it, but like <laughs> It sounds so much fun, but then you know what? Having people fall in love through through letters is it's it's trickier it's than it sounds. Mm -hmm. How do you get them to go from hate to love, especially in letters? It's, it's pretty tricky. Anyway, um, so that actually is one of the things they discuss because um, it, it's a long story how they get on the subject of Austin, but their favorite Austin books, and she mentions that she had read Northanger Abbey and oh. enjoyed it. You know, it's like it ranks, she ranks her, her Austin's and he's like, how can you put Northanger Abbey above persuasion? That's just wrong. She's, and, um, you know, she's like, well, of course you like persuasion. All men love to think that they could leave for eight years and the woman would just sit around pining for him. And then when they get back, they can write her a single letter and she'll fall in love again. Like, kind of <laughs> oh my God. Silently punish her for a few months first. And, um, yeah. <laughs> whereas like Mr. Tilney is the Mary in the fuck, Mary kill of Austin where... <laughs> <laughs> He's he's a decent guy and he's funny and he's charming and he reads novels and he doesn't make fun of other people for their reading choices and he knows how much muslin costs, um, which is very impressive to Charlotte as she is a shopkeeper and not Charlotte Sally as she is a shopkeeper. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, so I sort of I have a fondness for Henry for Henry Tilney because he's underappreciated. Um, but and I <laughs> persuasion is in my lower half of Austin novels for that reason. That's so funny. That really I will never um, we'll we'll I mean he does. He doesn't he's he's kind of a nice he doesn't really guy. she turns him down and she's like fine uh, go away for eight years so there <laughs> um and then he kind of is neat nasty to her when he comes back and tries to punish her a little bit and then even when he writes her he's like you you 
woman, you know. I mean, he's just got a good line. He's got, he writes one good letter. He does. And it is a damn good letter. And for some people that makes up for it and some people that does. I mean, he does a few nice things. He's not a bad guy. Just, uh, but he doesn't know the price of muslin. He does not know the price of muslin. And, you know, he, uh, okay, anyway. So um, I love Darcy, of course. And I, and I love Henry Tony is probably third. And second is Mr. Knightley. I love Mr. Knightley. Um, I love that he and Emma have a slightly like, You know, okay, I've had a glass of wine. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's so much fan fiction from Pride and Prejudice, I wrote some of it. Um, and uh, of course there's a whole lot of like, because there's BDSM fanfic of everything, there's BDSM fanfic of, uh, of, of Pride and Prejudice. But I think that the one that always calls out for like a Fifty Shades of Grey meets Austin retelling is Emma, for sure. Like Mr. Yeah. Knightley is totally dumb. He's a dom. Yes, he was mm -hmm. like, badly done, Emma, badly done. <laughs> Mm. Um, so yeah, I like. I know a lot of some people feel like the whole age different thing is kind of creepy or something, but I love it, and I have loved I the you. <laughs> adaptations of Emma. Both, I love the Gwyneth, Pal Gwyneth Paltrow one mm -hmm. without embarrassment at all, no shame, and I love the new one too with Anna Taylor, mm -hmm. Anya Taylor Joy, Anna Taylor. -Joy. Anyway. I, love I feel like it has one of the best dance sequences besides the like everyone disappears in the 2005. Yes, crisis. it is like amazing. until this one, nothing compared. But in mm -hmm. Emma, like we got the hands in that scene is just. Oh, hands. And now I want to go watch it again. Johnny Flynn is just he brings all these little tiny touches to Nightly that are so good. Mm -hmm. Like, and then when he like comes home and just like lays on the floor. <laughs> Oh my god! I love it. It's so good. The yeah. come in is so I feel like we got to see a little <laughs> bit more of Knightley's mm -hmm. person, non-public oh. personality in that one, which I really mm -hmm. appreciated. Mm -hmm. I love Jeremy North in this. Yeah, me Knightley. too. Yeah. I came to that one because of I was I'm a big Ewan McGregor, <laughs> so I was I like, think, Ooh, Ewan McGregor is in that. I need to watch it. Frank. Like all of the other mm -hmm. Franks, oh, kind for of sure. Frank. Mm -hmm. And he at least like I'm like okay yeah I can I understand why you are the way that you are. Yes, he mm -hmm. he was a good Frank Churchill. That yes, role is often miscast. So is Willoughby. Like not Willoughby. Well, sometimes Willoughby also too. But Wickham, like in the mm -hmm. the Colin Firth and and, and Jennifer Hill, Pride and Precious. I'm like Wickham is such a like no like mm -hmm. no offense to that actor or whoever but like <laughs> the way he's styled everything about him he looks a little too old like mm -hmm. why would this guy be the one enchanting her like it just doesn't doesn't work for me at all mm -hmm. and then in the in the elizabeth uh the um karen knightley one we had like mr uh Poor man's Orlando Bloom or whatever is. Yeah, was. whatever. He was he was handsome, but he just wasn't like. <laughs> I don't know. He just he was just kind of there. It worked for me. I yeah, mean, he yeah, was like it worked better, but mm -hmm. I definitely you definitely got why somebody would be like, ooh. <laughs> um, he was mm -hmm. definitely pretty. Yes. So, I love um. Oh gosh. Dom Dominic Cooper as I just rewatched the BBC Sense and Sensibility. Ooh. Uh, Have you seen that one? Oh, there is from what time. years? So that's the one where Dan Stevens is Edward oh. Ferrers. And I really like him as Edward. That make he makes a good yes. And I oh the Emma Thompson Sense and Sensibility though. That's just a fantastic oh, movie. It's just a man, a beautiful movie. Mm-hmm. And, absolutely but yeah edward ferris is like i don't know he's like down below he's way below Went wentworth he's yeah i'm not even sure i wouldn't take henry crawford before i would take edward ferris i'm sorry i feel, I feel like in most cases heroines i find superior to heroes like in most yes. books yes. but especially in that one because she's so He's so passive. He doesn't like. Ugh. 
I mean, yeah, he, he, Eleanor deserves better. I mean, I'm happy for her. If she's happy, yeah. I'm happy. But, you know. I will say, I think one of my favorite Austin adaptations is Clueless. Oh, of course. I think it's kind of a perfect film. It, it is. is so good. But I made my daughter watch it with me and she was like, but it's so, it's weird that they're stepbrother and stepsister. Um, yeah. And I kind of get that bit, now, yeah, but. but like it was before that was like this weird big porny trope. So um, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> stepbrother, stepsister. Maybe thing, that's so. what launched it to be yeah. such a thing. Oh, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and there's Paul Rudd looking like maybe five years younger than he does now. So, if that, yeah, he's so beautiful. You're a virgin who can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Oh, yes. Okay. So sorry, that was a very long added in and, question. I know we have some that people specifically requested. No, but I Abbey deserves a new and really good adaptation. Aren't they doing one? Are they doing one? What's the I one that we're doing persuasion again? Oh, you're yeah. right. Aren't they doing two persuasions? Yeah. Like how much persuasion do we? I'm not persuaded. You don't need to be persuaded that much. <laughs> oh, I love the movie of Mansfield Park with, um, what's her name in it? I don't know her name, but um, the one that's kind of like, that um, slightly meta and she addresses the camera a lot. And Ooh, they put a one. lot of, oh, it's so good. And it um, kind of touches on, um, I can't remember anybody's name. The older Bertram brother who's come back from the West Indies and stuff and kind of has him, you know, it touches on the whole like um, colonialism and slavery um, issues a little bit more. And um, it's really good. And I don't remember her, her I want to say Fanny something, but that's because that's her name in the book. I don't remember the actress's name, but it's really good. It's probably like 20 years old now, but it, it yeah. um, I um, I enjoyed it a lot. Good. Okay, I'm actually intrigued to see this one. So this was from, I believe, Christy. Yep. Um, sorry, go ahead. Is there a recipe that you have in mind for <laughs> witch or tuna ish or what was the other one? The roast sham oh, roasted roast leaf. leaf. Roasted roast leaf. leaf. No. no. <laughs> I'm so I sorry. Love Why would it inflict one. that on anyone? I mean she mentions a little bit what she puts in them. I mean, I I um yeah, no. And I don't eat a lot of meat and I eat meat substitutes all the time. So I'm not knocking um, <laughs> meat substitutes whatsoever, but like Penny's version of them <laughs> isn't quite terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love um, the ball at the end, how he made sure everything was, was, um, yeah. It's like seeing for her. It's so sweet. They're a party. Okay. Mm. Next question. Next question. Will Love Letters from a Lord be the last Spindle Cove novella or will there be more? Oh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I definitely would leave, leave that open ended. Yes. Okay. What is the potential? Okay. So Julia wants to know. So Ooh. Wait, I like this one. <laughs> Um, that would be sort of a spoiler. I mean, uh, <laughs> she's not saying no, but she's not saying yes. I mean, I'm trying to think of what it could be. We got roast leaf. Sham and tuna. -ish. I'm trying to think of like, how would we do turkey? Good thing. Or chicken. Or um, like a mincemeat pie. I'm trying to think of an alternative to mincemeat. <laughs> um, chestnut pie. Min I, I was just the book is more about biscuits than sandwiches, so there's Ooh, definitely like more biscuits. of that going on than there is sandwiches. Although okay. sandwiches get a mention, okay, or two. <laughs> Let me just say that I mean, 
ever since, you know, Gabe told her everybody hates her sandwiches and Penny now knows it, you know, she's less likely to inflict it, them upon others. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now the sandwich test is gone and he needs to prove himself some other way. <laughs> I look forward to it. Mm, oh my gosh. So wait, where's Lacey said mince beet pie. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's a good one. Okay, sorry, back to questions. Okay, so Julio says several of your heroes have redemption arcs that happen late in the novel or sometimes later in the series. How do you plan that and how do you determine the point of no return for bringing the reader with you? Wow, that is like a really deep question. A redemption arc meaning like after the third the act. The big bad is late in the book. <laughs> like Piers, I didn't realize how late in the book he like burns all of her stuff. Yeah, wow. a lot of people really, really didn't like that. And if you didn't like that, that's okay. Um <laughs> I still like him. That was um, a great banter. Yeah, it I mean I didn't really see that necessarily as so much of a redemption. It's just like him being like his usual alpha. He's kind of, he's manipulative. I mean, he's a spy. So like he, um, he definitely um, has the, you know, I tried to make it clear and wanted it to be clear that nobody was ever really in danger, but yeah, um, sure. yeah he's always got it all under control. So uh I'm not sure um, if that's so much of a redemption as though like a learning to use his powers for good. <laughs> um, I mean, like they, if, if you're talking about redemption in terms of like getting through like some kind of secret, you know, some pain that they've been avoiding. Um, secret pain. Dealing with. Yeah, I definitely have that alone with a lot of my heroes. Um, and it's just like a trope that I really... I enjoy reading and I enjoy writing. So I know it's a little bit, it might be a little bit tropey and cliche, but I just, you know, I can't get over the hero who's like deeply tortured from some kind of um, rejection or, you know, family trauma and has never fully dealt with that and feels unworthy of love because of it you know I just you know I can't get enough of that mm -hmm. we eat it up too <laughs> yeah I mean it's just, I, it's just you know they say we all have kind of our core story so I guess that would be part of mine I love that in Say Yes to the Marquess, they like name it like oh this is your secret pain I was pain. like <laughs> And he right away is like, I don't have one. You can't figure me out. <laughs> you know? It's like, sure. mm -hmm. sure. says the man mm -hmm. with deep pain. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was just sort of like at my to making fun of myself at that point. So good. That was your secret work. pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, Jack, you want to put the other question up? Yes. Sorry, it just took me a minute. I am going to sneak it, um, just plug in something before the battery dies. Mm -hmm. But I can hear you. Keep plugging. Okay. There's a scene in the Duchess deal where Emma makes a gown fit for a Duchess from uh, <laughs> the Ashes Velvet Curtains. Were you inspired by Maria from The Sound of Music when that happened? Oh, oh yes. Maria. Yeah. So good. <laughs> oh, for sure. Christopher love, Plummer, man. He dresses out of, out of curtains is a classic, you know. Christopher Plummer was Christine kind of my headcanon for peers. I will say that. Yeah. Really? Oh, like, not cool. like, I see like it. more the demeanor, I guess, like the the raised brow. Mm -hmm, like, mm, interesting. The stern, like, <laughs> I think I had sort of, like, I'm not. Well, and now he's a little bit, um, but um, did you see the man from Uncle? Like, not that many people did, but yeah, Arvin Hammer, his did. character in that was very, like, pure formative for me, I think. Um, mm. he's, yeah. That's probably my favorite 
Uh, it is unfortunate that he is the person that he is. Henry Cavill's character in that. that oh. Is, is rather like, he's, they're both spies, but. Um, that was a great movie. Mm-hmm. It really was a good movie and it's a shame it didn't do better. But I loved the scene. Uh, unfortunately, Army Hammer is, ugh. but yeah, the no, scene right? where the song "Cried to Me" by Solomon Burke is playing in the background, and uh, oh gosh, she plays the new Victoria. She's the new Lara Croft. Alicia oh. Vikander. Yeah, Alicia yes. Vikander. Oh yes, I love. Her. Is like a little bit like. She's had a little bit to drink, so she's feeling a little free. Yeah. And she puts me about like let's wrestle. And yes. they like and the song is playing. That's so hot. And the yeah. tension is so good. It really is. It really is so good. It's great. It's great. If you guys have not watched The Man from Uncle, it is a very excellent film. It's Lots definitely worth the watch. And great clothes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good and beautiful people, three beautiful yes. leads. I love Alicia Vikander. She's one of, she's she, so she and like Anya Taylor-Joy and mm. um, um, Florence Pugh. Mm. Um, and like, yeah. they're like people I could just like stare at and watch. They're so captivating they're to look so at. I'm like, they're just captivating. And, um, <sighs> and I, I just, you know, I don't know what it is, but it just feels like there's so much like I don't know. There's so many nuances in, in everything, or maybe they're just like so pretty. I don't know. <laughs> just, little but I, 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 I from little women. I find them like really, really absorbing to watch. The scene from Little Women where um, Florence Pugh does her speech about like, so what if I would like to marry rich? Uh-huh. Every time I see it, I'm just like, ugh. Oh, wait, Elizabeth DeBecky. Oh, is she the like evil lady at the end who tries to kill them? I bet she is. <laughs> she also played in The Crown, the Princess Diana, which really? I have not yet seen. But I didn't know that. Very good. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I know that. I think my sister told me. <laughs> very good. I've been meaning to watch The Crown. I think it's just a little too serious, and I'm not in a serious mood at this current. Yeah, period. I don't know why. It was I, a, I did not. This last season during all of this would not recommend. It. I was like, mm-hmm. I just want the energy to think about things that are sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's too. Much or like people that like cuddled up to Nazis a lot. I don't know. Like. Yeah, Prince Andrew, it. like oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just um, yeah. I I don't. I did watch part of the first season, and I liked it, but I don't know why. But I have been meaning to go maybe watch this most recent Some season point. because I hear it's really good. So yeah, all that I've been watching lately is Ted Lasso, and I also recently finished um, She-Ra: Princess of Power <laughs> on Netflix. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that was on so there. Good. Very much recommend. Like it's it's like the energy is very much like anime cartoon style, mm-hmm. but it's like fantasy. So many people on the show are like very much giving himbo energy of like they care a lot. They want to protect their friends. They're very funny, but like they're not always engaging on the level that they should be engaging. Which like they're like young people, so it makes sense. So it's just like very charming and it's very queer and wonderful. 10 out of 10. So if you're looking for a new show on Netflix and you're into cartoons and fantasy, check it out. Yes, it is so good. Thank you, Annie. (laughs) I hadn't even heard it was on. So I'm just like a slave to reality TV right now. I'm just. Ooh, what are you watching? Oh, I watch it all. I watch Big Brother. I'm so excited that there's more Survivor coming out. Mm. I'm so excited for the new season of Survivor. That's my favorite. Um, and Love Island and The Circle oh, and Bachelorette so slash right now it's Bachelor in Paradise. I get to be on a podcast um, this week talking about Bachelor in Paradise. Oh my gosh. That's, That's awesome. so great. Um, and yeah, so I don't I don't know what it is. Um, I just, uh, I find, you know what, 
for me, I find reality TV to be a very good um, people watching substitute. Yeah. You know, that's a really, that's so true. That makes so much sense. Because it's, so the people, you know, they bring all their different quirks and then they always inevitably come out. You know, they, mm. they can try to be somebody they're not for a while, but it doesn't last. And, um, and yeah, I mean, they're definitely interesting people and they re interact with each other in weird and wonderful ways. Sometimes they hate each other. Sometimes they fall in love. Sometimes, you know, they just bicker. Um, I definitely watched the Love is Blind reunion the oh. minute that it came back on. Um, I watched the first season right as the pandemic was starting. And it was, oh, I, I watched it on my last that. airplane flight to Vegas. I went to oh. Vegas right before and I was like, I don't know if I should go. But no one told me not to. So I guess I'm going. And I made a friend on the plane because she's like, tell me when you get to the part where Jessica loses it. And I was like, okay, I will. We like made friends on the plane. It was a good time. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. It brings people together. That was so good, that show. And it just, um, it, I stayed up, like, I was so invested in Cameron and Lauren and I stayed up until like midnight for the new season, the new, the last episodes to drop. So I was, so I was like, I'm going to watch their wedding because they know when I'm getting married and I just can't. Aww. I was so in love with them. Mm -hmm. They're so pretty. There's something about like people falling in love on reality TV that just like hits the spot. Like I watched the most recent um, season of, it wasn't, it was too hot to handle. And there was a school of Emily and Cam, and they're both models, and they're both like only partial, like they're both just like hot young models. <laughs> and that kind of tells you what you need to know about them. And, but like they slowly fall in love, like, you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like they're still dating, I think, it last I happen. checked. And I was yeah. like, this is great. I love this for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really. Um, I think I enjoy it because I got together with my husband really quickly. Like we went from meeting to like engaged really fast. And, um, and I knew that, and, and just kind of like one of those, we knew it even faster, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like it's true that people can really fall in love very quickly. I mean, I don't know about first sight, but, uh, the um so yeah not insta love but like sometimes you click yeah mm -hmm. fast love <laughs> falling falling in love really and quickly and so i really do believe in it and so and sometimes i feel like on reality shows it actually really does happen you know mm -hmm. and it's fun to watch when it does absolutely so. agree um, um so i need to take off in like five so. Yeah, so and i don't think we had any other and questions in the comments. Um, so I think it'd be a good time to wrap it up. Thanks you guys so much. Thank you for amazing. joining us. This was such a treat. <laughs> you, you guys are amazing. I just can't believe you devoted so many hours to reading my books. And like, I feel bad that now you know them better than I do. Like, and I don't even care. I don't know about that. <laughs> there was a lot of group effort to yeah, remember things too. Oh um, uh, certain yeah. members had different, like, we didn't come up with everything. Like, I want to shout out who did our bank count? Rhonda, Rhonda. Did our bank count. Mm -hmm. So we ranged Thank like, you, Rhonda, you gem. Mm -hmm. Someone else came up with just description, and I can't remember who, who that was. Thank that was you. Amazing. That's yes. amazing. Yes. That's, That's really great. Definitely group. going in the lexicon of the, yes. of the genre. Absolutely. We appreciate you so much for being here. And Aww. it's been a lovely thing to do. You guys are amazing. Over the summer. So thank you. I yeah, can't well, believe it's not summer anymore. This I know. So yeah. spooky bingo is next. So everybody get Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. The day after Jackie's birthday. It is my birthday on Tuesday, just by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> my it's uh, my husband's birthday too. Like it's oh, like, it is a very popular a birthday year. week. Mm -hmm. Don't you meet a lot of people with that birthday or somewhere in there? Oh, we do. That's because you. it's exactly nine months after Christmas. That's why. Huh. 
Mm-hmm. Did not know that. My son, I mean, yeah. my little one was born on the 13th of September. So <laughs> my Sorry, birthday is in December. Together, so okay. yeah, but I think there's a lot of, people, yeah, <laughs> a lot of September babies. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. Good love love it. It. Very good. And then do we want to say who we're reading next? Or is it watching? Oh, I think Ooh. we've, we've let, We've whis- there's been whispers, but we are going to be reading the Fitzhugh trilogy by um, Sherry Thomas. Ooh. I'm so excited. Coming in November. Yep. We haven't, Beth and I were joking about um, calling it, Are you? I don't know if people are familiar with the song Sherry by the Four Seasons. No. <laughs> <laughs> but because everyone, because Sherry is known for her angst, uh-huh. Beth and I were like, we should call it Sherry pain e instead of baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she is she's a heart wrencher. Yeah, yeah she oh. will she's gonna take us through it. <laughs> so ready. <laughs> Not secret pain. This is like pain pain. Yes. A yes. Layer pain. cake of pain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Delicious one. Mm-hmm. Rich. Yeah. It's yes. so good though. So good. Talk about um Another musical reference, Hurt So Good by John Cooper Mellencamp is a good, like, it encapsulates her writing very well. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very good. good. Well, all right. I guess final thank yous, and we'll see you yes. online. Yes. And yeah, us. yeah, of course. I'm for sure. Anything you need for so much for having doing. me and for doing a little Yes, thank you for joining us. This so fun. All right. Go. Have a good night, everyone. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Bye.